Hi, I'm Ula from Gapminder. It's April 2020 and we're in the middle of the global corona lockdown. It's very difficult times and I think many of us hope something positive will come out of this. I've seen people talk about global warming and the fact that the airplanes across the world, almost all of them, are cancelled. They hope this will show up in the emission statistics as an example of how we have to live to stop global warming. I'm afraid of jumping to that conclusion. I think actually talking about it that way might backfire when people realize that no, this is way too small to stop global warming. To reduce greenhouse gas emissions, we need to understand where the gases come from. And the most important aspect is how rich people are. Here are 8 billion people sorted so the poorest billion is to the left and the richest to the right. And that's the one I belong to, and we are responsible for half of all the greenhouse gas emissions. And the remaining emission, half of it comes from the second richest, and there you go. The others only emit a quarter of the total. So it's really we who are the problem. Now, how much of this comes from airplanes? We ask this question to our followers on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook, and also to 117 people in UK. Here are their results. This comes from a small online poll we did in February with Google surveys. There are too few people to say anything for sure about the UK public, but you can clearly see how very few went for the small number. We are careful not to mislead people by how we design our questions. So we first asked a question with more answer options, like this to 123 other people. You can see how the results are very similar. And Gapminder's followers answered like this on Instagram, Twitter, and 80% of our followers on Facebook picked the right answer. Less than 6% of greenhouse gas emissions comes from airplanes. Which shows that our followers are way more knowledgeable than what I think the UK public is on this matter. In the UK, instead, a majority went for the wrong and the very wrong answer. They have probably heard that airplane emission is a huge part of the UK emissions. So what's the problem if people exaggerate the emissions from airplanes? That will keep them away from flying, you might think. But I already heard people who are disappointed that even after these sacrifices for corona, this is not enough to stop global warming. How could they expect that? We're still heating our houses the same way and produce our food the same way. The main difference is a little bit of traffic and the airplanes, right? And they need to realize that that's a small fraction right now. In the future, though, airplanes are going to be a much bigger problem. I'll show you. Right before Corona, airplanes emitted roughly 5% of all greenhouse gases, and that includes the high altitude effect above 8,000 meters. If after Corona the trends continue, the future will look something like this. By 2030, there will be 1 billion more people, everybody struggled to get richer, and by 2050 they will have succeeded, and there will be 2 billion people flying airplanes. I'm not saying that I think this is a good thing, the kind of overconsumption at the rich end. I'm just saying that this is the most likely thing to happen if the trends before Corona continue afterwards. This much greenhouse gas will heat up the planet very fast. We, the richest people, will have to reduce our emissions and replace our energy sources with green energy to generate electricity and heat our homes and drive our cars. If we succeed bringing it down to this level, in 2050 the total emissions will be the same as they are today. But to avoid heating the planet 1.5 degrees, we will have to cut that with 45% as well. And in the future, if we want to fly across the Atlantic, we need to have these kind of green airplanes, which I haven't seen any of yet. So let's be careful not to confuse the discomfort from this corona lockdown with the kind of lifestyle changes needed to stop global warming. Instead, we're going to learn other things from corona, such as how vulnerable we are. Imagine a pandemic that actually kills children or have a higher fatality rate. Now we are at least a little bit prepared. And we'll learn how much we need a global collaboration in such situations. Also, please sign up to be a tester of our new Ignorance Reduction Service, which we're soon launching. We have tested thousands of fact questions where people are systematically wrong. Or just stay tuned to Facebook, Twitter or Instagram, where we're going to keep posting many of these questions and we'll tell you when the service is ready.